terrorism by scholars is defined when an individual, a group, or a state is using violence for achieving religious, political, and cultural gains. And using violence, and most of the time this violence is used against the defenseless civilians. So that's why they're called, whether it's done by an individual, blowing a mosque, or blowing a church, or blowing an installation somewhere. So, and when the victims are mostly civilians, so that's defenseless group, so that's, that's terrorism. It's committed by state or individual or group. And another term is the jih jihadi explaining, and again, another term, extremist jihadi, extreme. Extremist is defined by scholars. Those are, are extremism are the acts which go far beyond the accepted norms of a society, or values of a society. So they are too much, either to the left or to the right. So they are extremists. They can be both. And another term is Defining jihad is a little bit difficult because jihad has different meaning for different groups. Jihad is an Arabic term. It means, literally, it means striving or struggle. Struggle and striving to please God and do the God's commands and follow the commands of the God. So that's what the jihad is. There are two kinds of jihad defined by scholars and experts. Islam and comparative religion. Uh, when is that the greater jihad? The greater jihad is for a person that who purifies his self and does not do the wrong things in following the commandments of the God, whether it is in Torah, whether it's in the New Testament, and it is in the Quran, and it is in the Psalms of David. So that's for the Muslim. So this is a term used by the Arabs. So this is the greater jihad, that when you, it's, a, it's a spiritual and cleansing yourself, your soul, and not harming someone else and not committing sins, but just accept it as a sin. And not be extremist. This is the greater jihad. The lesser jihad is, which can take physical shape. You can take arms and fight against those who attack you. But you should not be the attacker. But somehow, throughout the history, this jihad was misused by Muslims themselves. Declaring jihad against each other, the ones that would not agree with you. So jihad is a term that which have been abused by the Muslims, many of them Muslims, and many of them extremists. Our state terrorism in the Middle East are, and I can list some of them, uh, the actions of early Egyptians, the pharaohs, which was a state-sponsored terrorism, when the pharaohs ordered that Israelites should be killed and destroyed and the children, that was a state-sponsored terrorism. Until the story of the Moses that we know that delivered the Jews and the Exodus story and the post. So this was an act of state terrorism. Assyrians, they destroyed the Israelite kingdom of the north uh, in 8th century BC. That was a state sponsored terror and, and totally decimated the whole Jewish groups. Disappeared. And then came the Babylonians. They took the, uh, destroyed the, the, the temple and the, the, the Judas. So this was also a state of terrorism. Uh, then when you look at the history of the Hebrews, when they went back from the bondage and they went and crossed the Jordan River, Joshua and others, they also committed atrocities and genocides uh, against those that which the God ordered us to do that. When you look at it. Uh, so, so this is, and then comes the, the pagan Romans, Macedonians. They committed, when they went from today's Macedonia, captured Greece from Greece. They went to Turkey from Turkey, the next of the great, uh, went to Iran from Iran, past the Hindu Kush, and then in Afghanistan, and they, he, they, they might, so this was also a state sponsor of terrorism against the civilians, Macedonians. Then after that, the pagan Romans, pagan Romans before the, the, the Eastern Rome, before, before Emperor Constantine became Christian, and his mother became the Christian first, and then he, and then we go to the 313 AD, the first Nicene, uh, conference and then she presided over. Uh, so that is, until that time, also he, Emperor Constantine had the vision that there was a cross and under the banner of the cross he would conquer other places. So he committed, in the name of Christianity, many other acts that which are classified today as a state-sponsored uh, terrorism. Then you come back to go to the Muslim Arabs. They conquered started in today's Makkah and then went to Medina and then from Medina Islam spread 
eastward and westward, went all the way up to Spain, conquered Egypt and Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and then they went to Afghanistan and Iran and Turkey and those places, Central Asia, the spread of Islam. Also, some of them did by the swords, some of them, both the Christians and the Muslims, have used uh, military power at that same time for the conquest. So that is also a state-sponsored terrorism against other people that who are not either Muslims, are not Christians, are not Jews. Um, then the Ottoman Turks, after the, they were, and then the Mongols. Chinggis Khan came and from Mongolia captured most of the Central Asian countries, slaughtered people in today's Afghanistan and Iran, and went all the way down. Uh, then the Tatars, we know that the Tatars yoke, uh, and when the Russians got their independence in some 16th century, and they spread uh, westward. And then the, 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 the Tsarist Russia committed atrocities in capturing all these areas and also coming passing the Bering Sea and colonizing Alaska. So that was fun. So that, they did that at the expense of other people and the native people in other areas. So these are all state sponsored terrorism throughout the history. And many of them did it in the name of Yahweh, Lord, or Allah. In my lifetime, the British, French, the Soviet Empire, the Nazi Germany, because I was born uh, at the end of World War II. So these the Nazi Germany committed, these were all state-sponsored uh, terrorism. And then the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, as I mentioned, from 1989, and about 1.2 million civilians in Afghanistan were killed uh, during the Soviet tenure occupation. So those were state-sponsored uh, terrorists in my lifetime. Now, these are the states that I mentioned, whether the Macedonians, and Romans, and Tiger, and Christians, and Muslims, and Mongols, and others. And now we have the non-state extremist groups. That they are not states, but they are terrorist organizations and extremist organizations that we call from outside. Uh, in the first century AD, the Jewish zealots, to fight for God against Romans, so that was a group, not a state. State was at one time, but this is a non-state group. The Christian Crusaders Knights, from 1099 to 1302, so they went back to Jerusalem and others, and one of the, when the Crusaders started their crusade in 1099, their first attempt was on the Jews of the Rhine Valley, they almost decimated them, and they went and looted the churches, the Orthodox churches in Eastern Europe, and from there, the Crusaders went to Jerusalem, which was Muslims and Jews combined there. They slaughtered, and even the chroniclers have written that in the Jerusalem, the blood of the Jews and the Christians, the Jews and the Muslims were up to the knees of their horses of the Crusaders. So it was a very nasty branch of people. Some of them were state sponsors, some of them were these Crusader knights on their own. So these were also the group, we call it group terrorists or group extremists. 